in this lesson we're going to look at removing wrinkles and I, I kind of hesitate to show you how to remove wrinkles because it's been shown to death. It is probably the most widely shown retouching technique in the history of retouching techniques. But there is one little thing that I do that's different that, that might help you and you might find useful. Um, but uh, I mean it's it's going to be the healing brush, right? <laughs> okay, so I won't spend a whole lot of time on this, but I will show you. The first step to doing this is absolutely positively duplicate the background layer and work on a copy. And you'll see why. It's not just the, the non-destructive thing, but the key technique of this, the whole key thing is to do what I just did, duplicate that background layer. Now we'll go grab the healing brush tool. And now what you're going to do is I recommend just erase all wrinkles. Just go through here and erase every wrinkle. Make him look like he was just born. <laughs> so every wrinkle comes out all the way across. So I'm just kind of, you know, option clicking. And Wow, that, was, that didn't take long there, did it? Okay, and every little anomaly and everything comes out. So over here, same deal. And you can probably make some good use of the patch tool here too if you want. Let's kind of go in here and get this area out. So once I kind of clear this off, now I can use the patch tool. Because for big areas, you know, it works pretty well. But where are you going to drag it to? Maybe right there? Eh, it's not so bad. I mean, it's not great. But again, you're going to have to wait to the end of this retouch to see it all come together. At this point, the main thing you're concerned with is getting rid of the of the wrinkles. So let's just go here and go get them all. And it'll take me just a couple of minutes. I don't want to spend all day on this because this is kind of a been done to death technique. But we still got to do it. So and people still ask for it. I mean it's 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 been done to death because it's one that we all do a lot. So uh Let's just get these out of here too real quick. And I'm going to do it as quickly as I can. It's not going to be as nice as if I took a little better time to sample all the right places. And by the right places, I mean it like when I see one that's kind of obvious, I don't undo it and go redo it like I would in real life. Because sometimes you choose a sample point and it just doesn't look good. So you're, you know, you just go and retouch it, you know, redo it. Try a different spot. Uh, also, there's a tool that we haven't talked about a whole lot. In fact, we haven't even mentioned it really at all, which is the spot healing brush. So this is the regular healing brush. Above it is the stop, spot healing brush. So what's the difference between the healing brush and the spot healing brush? It's really the same brush. It's just one of them, you get to choose the sample point. So you get to choose where the skin will be sampled from that it, the texture is pulled over to hide your your wrinkle or spot. The other one, you don't. The spot healing brush, you just pick up and start clicking. And that's it. It does everything for you. The regular healing brush is the one where you get to choose where it does, where it samples from. So why use one or the, or the other? Well, I find that the more frustrating of the two is the spot healing brush because it chooses where it thinks it should sample from for you. And sometimes it's right, and a lot of times it's not. So what winds up happening is I wind up doing a lot more undos with the spot healing brush than I wind up doing with the regular healing brush. So after, unless it is just a photo that has literally spots, if it's just to open up an old like restoration type photo, it's got a lot of spots, that's the one instance where I will actually, you probably fast forwarded past all this, haven't you? Uh, <laughs> Where I, where I actually will use the spot healing brush. But other than that, I really don't use the spot healing brush a bunch because it uh, seems to be a little frustrating. I usually find myself going, why don't I just use the healing brush in the first place and be done with it? So that's what I usually do. All right, so we've removed enough of these. And we can we could do this as well here if you wanted to get this kind of big cheek line out of here. You could do that too. Really make him look like, you know, he's just a kid. All right, so we have a really unrealistic, unnatural looking retouch here, and that's just what we were shooting for because we're going to fix it in the next step. All right, and we're going to have to kind of, this is going to be a little little tougher. Yeah, that's, that's pretty bad. You're going to have to be a little better with that. We'll get the rubber stamp tool and just get right on that little spot because I was rushing it, and, you know, when you start rushing a retouch, it always looks like you rushed the retouch. There we go. Just, I mean, that's, I didn't spend a whole lot of time, but certainly that looks better. 
There we go. Now that whole area looks a little faked. So when I find an area looks kind of obvious, then I'll go grab the patch tool and go, okay, fix that up. There you go. Okay, here's why we did this whole thing. By getting rid of all the wrinkles, now what you do is you go to the opacity, and right now, it, all the wrinkles are gone. It looks incredibly fake and odd and just weird. You're supposed to make your client look 10 years younger, not 45 years younger or 50 years younger. So you're going to use this slider and start bringing back the wrinkles, right? Because your customers or your your client or whatever is supposed to look their age. You just want them to look a little bit younger, 10 years younger, not 40. All right, so I dropped this down to 36%, all right? So he has 35% less wrinkles than he did. doesn't seem like a big deal, but look. Look at the difference. Look at that. Look at the difference that makes. So the wrinkles are still there. All right, but they've been just greatly reduced. So you get to decide because it's your opacity slider whether you want your customer to have less wrinkles or a whole bunch more. But generally, you know, anywhere between 35 and maybe 50 percent, uh, probably 35 to 50, somewhere in there would be about right. And again, it, it depends on the individual image, so I can't really give you an exact number. But the whole key to this thing is basically just what you just saw. Just duplicate the layer first because then you wind up with that control after the fact and you can dial in a realistic wrinkle. So there you have it. It's pretty short and sweet except for all the time you had to sit there and watch me wipe out every single wrinkle. But, you know, the final image looks, looks much, much better.